holding on to you Holding on and I know you will never fail I want all of you, you never change your mind I about that because I also want, that's the end And you need to understand there's a journey to get there Amen. So we see the end, and we say we want that. And so many people, Friday night, we talked about the call, and that's the first step. So many people answered that call. I don't know how many, it was a lot. And some was maybe just saying, yes, Lord, but some, there were some specific things happening as well. And we'll probably hear the stories over the next years. And they answered that call, and that's a step. And then another step, last night, we, we talked about the empower, the power and prayed for the impartation of the Holy Spirit, which equips us to answer that call. That's another step. But then we have to start walking it out. And it is a journey sometimes. And we want to keep that in mind. You know, we're in the microwave culture. Everything is supposed to happen like this. And that's how me and my wife were. You know, when we, God called us to missions in 1995, we'd just gotten married. So we had each been in ministry in different ways. But it's just after we got married, he called us to missions. And right away, God laid it on my heart. The first thing we did is we printed out this, or bought this huge map of the world. And right in our living room, we didn't put it in a back room, just put it on the wall and just typed out on our old dot matrix printer from a few years ago. <laughs> Until the whole world knows. And that's what people, they came into our apartment, that's what they saw. Because God had called us, 1995. And I remember that apartment. My niece, Sean, I just asked her to make sure I was remembering it correctly, because I'm getting a little older, but I did remember it correctly, she said. <laughs> she would come visit us and would see that map. And we had no, there was, the, our vision was the world. We had nothing that, I, I, I grew up in Buffalo, New York. We were living in Buffalo, New York. Our, there was so, we were renting this old dilapidated apartment. There were so many holes in the windows and the walls that our heating bills were higher than our rent because just the heat just went out. You know, Buffalo is cold. Right? <laughs> you know my... We had nothing, but we had faith. And we had that word that God had given us. And so that's where we, we were then, where some of you are now. We had answered the call. We had the equipping. And we had no way to get it done on our own strength. And a couple of years after that, then God gave us the name. 1997, Come Alive World. Next, two years later, so nothing. Live your life. Try to pay your bills. Watch your money go out the windows. <laughs> right? <laughs> Take, raise your kids. Right? You could get discouraged. Two years later, then God gives, then that, that's it. Name, that was it. Come Alive World. Ezekiel 37. Okay, next step. Then nothing. Then he's like, write the vision down. Now it's starting to form. Now this is happening over years. I'm trying to make a point, right? Sometimes this takes time. And you have to be patient in that time. And you have to be faithful in that time. See, God is just, he's testing you, right? One of my mentors, Pastor Bernie in Scotland, he's a beautiful man of God. And, and I, at one time I asked him, I said, why do you think God called you to this great work, you and your wife? And his answer to me, he says, well, it's not because we're the smartest, because we're not. He said, it's God just knew me and my wife would be faithful. That's all it was. And so sometimes at time, you're urgent, you're trying to get there, which is normal, completely normal, but he's testing you. He's refining you. He's making you so that when you get there, you're not going to fail and crash and fall, Right? So don't rush to get there. Write it down. So after three years, it's write the vision down. Then I think, okay, this is it. It's time to get started. So I take the vision to my pastor. 
He's like, no, sorry. And that's another story. <laughs> like, whoa, that's, that's defeating. <laughs> but God, you gave me this vision. He said, it's okay. Just wait. He's your pastor. Submit. Just wait. We moved to another city because of our job. Ten minutes? No. <laughs> Who stole my time? I'm teasing you. Ten, he, take it to, we moved to another city. Take it to another pastor. Another reason why it can't happen. Take it to our friends. Some of our friends in Jamaica, church leaders. They say, oh, okay, the vision's okay, but it's too big. Cut it down. Just do this. You know, it's really, I mean, look at you guys. You're just kind of regular people. That's what they're saying, right? I mean, come on. Okay, go do something. Go do some good work. But I'm like, no, God, this is a vision. There's a vision here. Over time, six years, 2001, is where finally God launched it. And then it was small. Right? Then it starts, a little bit, poco a poco, we say, in Spanish culture, little by little, building, building, building. Because that's, that's how God does things, right? And we can't, we can't rush it. There's a process, because then you look back and you're like, yeah, I'm glad. Because we weren't ready back then for a crusade with 10,000 people. One night, Shauna was there. I don't think you were there that trip two years ago. We prayed for like 1,500 people six hours, five hours, I don't remember how long, they just lined up in India. Mustard seed, that's right. It was small. We weren't ready for that back then. We weren't ready for the battles it would take for attacks on our family. Anyone in ministry? You got to be ready, right? Step by step. Do not rush this process. Stay faithful to it, though. Don't back off, right? Do not back off. We never took that vision and said, oh, no, God, you're, these people are right. We just kept moving it forward. That's all. So, okay, it is the vision. It will come to pass. That's Habakkuk. You write it down, it will come to pass. But push it, okay, later. It'll happen. We just be faithful in what we can do. Amen? The Bible says, you know, Proverbs 16, 9, that it's man sets a course in his heart but that God determines his steps. Amen? We don't determine the steps. For us, the path then is going all over. We say, God, you told me this. Yeah, the course is right. I put that in your heart. But the steps may be a little different. They're always different, actually, right? Because life, you work it out, and God is wiser. He knows better than us. He knows when, things, when times are set up. Sometimes... The wait is only because other people aren't ready. So you have to wait till situations are ready and other people are ready. When we can't understand these things ourselves, we can't know them ourselves. Amen? And so you see this, and that is the goal. Whatever God lays on your heart, do not back off that. Do not let go. Because he will fulfill it. And then just walk it out. Walk it out, step by step. So many people I talked to yesterday, God has laid things on people's heart in this church. But about half of them are like, well, how do I make it happen? I'm kind of like, you don't. <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't. You just do the next step. That's all you can do, the next step. Okay, what's next, Lord? What do you want me to do today? What's next? Oh, go talk to this person, okay? And there will be little tests along the way. All right, so you think, you know, I thought our calling was to Spain. But then my test would be, I remember one time we're driving, and fast food, middle of the night, and I go in and get my burger. And I just look, and I go, oh, that lady's really sad. I should pray for her. Oh, no, 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 I'm in a hurry. I walk out. And the Holy Spirit's like, seriously? Right? I told you to pray for her. You want to go do great things? And all I want is this woman just want, needs someone to pray for her right now. And you can't do that because you're in a hurry? And I'm like, 
Oh, sorry. I'm, so just so you know the parable, there's one that said yes and then didn't do it. I'm always the guy that says no and then, okay, I'll go do it. But I do say no a lot, I'll confess, at the start. You know, we all have to know how we are. And the Holy Spirit's like, and finally I'm like, okay, God, I'll do it. And that woman broke down. I don't know what was going on, but she needed just someone to say, God loves you, I love you. Never saw her. It was in India. We're just driving through on the interstate. Never going to see her again. Who knows? But then you realize, oh, that was the test, right? They had to do that to get there. And so our text, real quick, I'll preach in two minutes. Enoch did it in five minutes yesterday, a whole sermon. <laughs> Ezekiel 37, and it'll be fast, don't worry. Because this is the theme of our ministry. Come Alive World comes straight out of Ezekiel 37. And this is the next step. We talk about the call, the power, and now it's the life. This would never work in the church I grew up in. We would have four and five hour services whether the spirit was moving or not. <laughs> so I'm thankful we're past that time. <laughs> Amen. Ezekiel 37, starting at the first. The hand of the Lord is on me, and he brought me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were a great many of them on the surface of the valley, and they were very dry. Then he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? The Spirit led the prophet and showed him the dry, dead bones. That's what happens when God gives you that burden, when he shows you a situation. All right, I was sharing with Toyria yesterday, and she'd say how God started to give her that burden for children. That's God showing you the dry bones that apply to your life, the calling for your life where there's a situation of someone that's hurting or lost or a situation that is dead. And so we see the Spirit of the Lord showing the prophet the dry bones. And then this is the best part. He asks him, says, can these bones live? He knows they can live. They're dry bones, which mean they used to be alive. And he knows they can live. God knows that. But he wants to know if the prophet believes that. He wants to know if we believe that the situation can change. Can these bones live? And anything that God calls you to, that's the question he's asking you. Do you believe? So that was the test for me and my wife. We had this vision. And so people are saying, no, no. And the question is, do you believe? Forget what other people are saying. Do you believe? what I am calling you to do. Forget figuring out how to do it. He says, that's my business. I'll figure out how it happens. Can you just believe? That's the question he faces, facing all of us. Anyone who's answered the call, who wants to serve God, the question is, can you believe that what he's called you to, you can do? Thankfully, you're in a house of faith. You have a pastor that has vision and puts it way out there and so you should be free to have vision for what God's called you to. Amen? And that's the covering over this. But that's the, that's the challenge. Can you believe? Whatever he's laid on your heart, can you believe? And then the best part, he says in verse 4, then prophesy to these bones. So now you speak to that situation. Again, God can do it, but that's not what he wants. He wants you to speak to the situation. You to start saying these bones can live before it happens. You have to speak before the bones start coming together. You have to speak before the vision starts to come to pass. Because it wasn't until then the prophet speaks, then the bones start coming together. He proclaims it. That's what the name of our ministry is, Come Alive World. We can proclaim to the world, come alive. We can speak it to the world. The situations God sends us in Cuba or Germany 
or Mexico or India. We can speak life into the situation. We have a team going to Malawi. They're called to speak life into that situation. And you have to speak it before you see it happen because that takes faith. That's where you say, and you don't know how it's going to happen, you say, yes, I'm going to take that step. And now I'm out here. Just like my wife said, Peter stepping into the water. He had to step out. He's the good one. I've heard sermons, you know, saying Peter's the, he's the one. At least he stepped out of the boat. Right? Okay. He got a little scared. Welcome to all of us getting scared. But he's, at least he stepped out. So you, have, and you, so you have to speak to that situation. And then what I love, if you follow through, is that it's not all done. So he speaks and the bones come together. And the tendons and the sinew. Still no breath. And so the Spirit says, prophesy again. Persist. Persevere. Right? What God tells it doesn't, things don't happen instantly. Processes. And our job is just not to give up. Our job is to keep faith. Our job is to persevere. Speak again, the Spirit says. And the prophet speaks life into the bones. And now they come to life. Now you see a thousand people in India give their hearts to the Lord. Now you see people with cancer healed. Right? But you have to take those steps. You get the call. This is where a lot of people get caught up. Everyone has a purpose. Ephesians 2.10, everyone has a purpose that God has created you for. Everyone has a calling. But how many people live it out? Why? Because somewhere along this path, they get sidetracked, they get discouraged, they give up. Listen, we all have discouragement. And the way back is you go to God and say, God, I can't. He loves that prayer. I don't have enough faith. Help thou my unbelief. I'm not strong enough. I'm afraid. You go tell him. He will keep you going if you just lay that before him, right? Dave, we're told by David that the sacrifices that he likes are a humble and contrite spirit. He doesn't care anyways about some big thing you're doing. You go to him. Say, this is the vision. I'm discouraged. I'm fearful. I feel like giving up. Help me. And he will take you. The next step. The next step. The next step. But the key today to the life is can you believe? Can you believe and speak it? The things that God has laid on your heart. Amen? And live it each and every day. <clears throat> Amen? And you will see it come to pass. That's the promise that God has given us. Yeah. Amen? Yes, Lord. So that's the one thing I can leave with you is... Let's stay with me, Mike. Let's do this, guys, if we could. If everyone for a minute could just bow your heads, close your eyes. There are some of us in this room who the Lord has given you vision, given you ideas, given you a sense of calling and a sense of direction. And maybe like Mike and Judy, you're at the beginning of that and, it, and people are telling you it's impossible, you can't do it. Or maybe you're having doubts yourself and and you hear the Lord saying to you, like he just shared, can these bones live? Can you believe God to do what he has called you to do? And maybe you're discouraged. Maybe you're feeling shaken in this calling. Maybe something is, is like making it look like I can't overcome. But we're going to pray this morning. And we're going to intercede on your behalf that faith would rise in your soul. That you can declare, yes, these bones shall live. That you shall prophesy to these bones and you shall follow the word of the Lord. Do not despise the days of small things, says the Lord. Because that mountain that's in your way, it shall become level and you shall overcome. 